Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm here with my second uh, transatlantic guest um, on this show. Uh, today, I'm with Tyler Meador uh, from Des Moines, Iowa, USA. Tyler, welcome, and thank you very much for taking some time to talk to me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. First question I want to ask you about is, how did you get to your job? Was it always your, your, your dream to work in talent acquisition? Tell us about the steps you took to get to where you are. Uh, short answer, no, it was not my dream. It wasn't a, a career path that I was even aware of um, getting out of college. So to be really honest, it was something I fell upon. I'm glad I did. But to, you know, be focused in talent acquisition wasn't something that's, you know, taught in in the college I went to or I think across the board. Um, so my background's actually in public health and health promotion. That's where I um, obtained my bachelor's degree in, and then actually worked, did a lot of volunteer work for nonprofits, which my organization is a nonprofit. So how I got connected with them um, in a roundabout way. But yes, I was, I actually started out as a health coach. So not even related to human resources or wow. talent acquisition. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I was recruited to be a recruiter actually is how I first got into this field um, to be a healthcare recruiter based yep. on my you know, my schooling um, kind of expertise, like what I knew about the industry, and they were looking for someone that actually knew the industry to be able to recruit on it. And that's what I got excited about, because I do have a very big passion for healthcare and um, doing what, you know, my organization does, and, and just in general in healthcare and, and ways to better that um, for, you know, everyone that we serve. So that's how I initially got into recruiting. So I've always been in the healthcare sector if you will. Um, I started out um, in an agency. So that's like a third party um, recruiting firm, essentially that companies would work with to help fill positions. I was predominantly in like a direct placement role. So higher level skill sets is what I was working on on a regular basis for both healthcare in the sciences. Um, so even like, you know, chemists, um, different positions like that, especially here in Iowa, we're big in agriculture. Yep. Um, so that was a lot of what I was focusing on as well as partnering with the hospitals, both here locally and regionally um, for their uh, staffing needs. So really grew my career um, from an, a recruiter to a senior recruiter to more of a, a manager, an account manager, managing those partnerships um, with the clients as well as managing a team of recruiters um, and then just kind of it's been a natural progression from there um, so how I got to my position I actually volunteered with Wesley Life we have a service line called Wesley Life Meals on Wheels that yep. delivers meals um, to folks in our community in 15 counties actually across the state of Iowa and I was recruited <laughs> again essentially um, into my role which is pretty exciting because my the director of talent acquisition is my title, um, and this is a new position for Wesley Life um, in, across the board. So historically, we have 12 communities or at physical sites across the state and in, in, in Illinois, um, and everyone was doing kind of their recruiting efforts separately. There wasn't a lot of like systemized um, or organization-wide processes or efficiencies, and they definitely saw the need to work together and a little bit more efficiently. Um, so that's how my position was developed. And then I was recruited into it. Um, and I've been here for a little over a year now in this particular role. Great. Okay. So tell us about the organization. Like what type of people do you hire? Uh, yeah. And, you know, how, how do you typically go about doing it? Yeah, absolutely. So Wesley Life, we are um, retirement community network. Um, so we really serve uh, people from kind of any step of the journey that they're in within their health and well-being journey and really trying to empower them and give that power of choice back into their lives. A lot of the folks, you know, whether we're talking about maybe skilled nursing services or long-term care, they've lost a lot of that 
choice um, and, and kind of empowerment within themselves or independence, I should say. So really trying to bring that back. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. We've been around for 75 years now, so pretty well established. Yep. Um, so who are we hiring? Within our physical buildings, our communities for healthy living, we're hiring um, registered nurses, uh, licensed practical nurses. So that's just kind of an in-between um, registered or sorry, uh, certified nursing assistants. So that might be considered like an aid in some other communities or organizations all the way to like resident assistants. So really the bulk of what we're hiring for is truly clinical or like they need to have some sort of certification, specific training, obviously being registered with the state, um, things like that. So pretty black and white, I guess, in that regard, in terms of experience because of the regulations involved and they're providing direct patient care. Um, we do also non-clinical, we also have um, a lot of culinary positions open. Um, so whether that's like food and beverage, so like, you know, servers, we have chefs, we have executive chefs, we have directors of culinary services. So yep. a wide gamut across the board there as well. So um, all of these skill sets, they're all falling off trees, aren't they? They're really easy to hire these people. <laughs> I wish. Yes. No, you've got, you're in a very, very competitive recruiting environment on the culinary and, uh, of course, on the clinical. So what are the uh, what are the most what are the kind of biggest challenges and maybe opportunities uh, that, that you've got uh, right now and, and maybe ahead of you? Yeah, so the biggest challenge, number one, is having the applicant flow, having people that will want to go into healthcare and stay in healthcare. Um, and we've had a nursing shortage. I mean, even 20 years ago, you, you look at labor market reports, it's not like it's been a new phenomenon. Um, the pandemic has obviously exemplified that, unfortunately. Um, we're experiencing people leaving the industry altogether, which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end of that, not as many um, you know, new or maybe incoming students or um, the younger generations are wanting to get into healthcare. So we're seeing a big gap um, there, you know, even to our more entry-level positions to the registered nurse where it does require experience. Um, that's our, our number one challenge right now. Um, that we are facing and then, you know, keeping people within our organization, we are, we are nonprofit. So we will never be at the top tier margin in terms of, of compensation. Um, we're definitely taking some great steps in 2022 um, for comp adjustments, just as they are needed, you know, even outside of just the market adjustments, even greater than that. Um, but what we're competing against currently, and I think this is true to be, you know, across maybe all of America and outside of just here, but um, competing with agencies. So yeah. like um, traveling nursing firms or things yeah. like that, where they can throw this insane hourly wage at a at yeah. a nurse, we can't even come close to. And so that's our biggest challenge that we're facing today. So I'm assuming that um, as a nonprofit in, you know, here in the UK, a lot of our healthcare is is, you know, is government, whereas in the USA, a lot of it's private. So um, yeah. I guess what you need to do is really amplify the mission driven, the purpose driven elements of the organization. And that's probably got to come across quite strong in your employer brand and communications and interviews. Absolutely. And that's what we lead with. And that's, I, you know, obviously I'm biased because I work here, but I truly do believe it. Um, and that's why I was drawn to this organization that we truly act out on our mission and values every day. It's not just this logo we have posted up somewhere on a wall and, and, say this is what we do in our yeah. everyday actions we're actually living that out um but you, to your point exactly yes and that's a continual focus for myself in talent acquisition for our marketing team is how are we actually getting that story out there and branding that we have such wonderful stories to tell from yeah. our team members from our residents but it's it's projecting it and showing this is really what it's like to work here um so we're, we've made a lot of ground on that but there's still a ton of um work to be done around that um area it's an industry i didn't know an awful lot about until the beginning of the pandemic and um <laughs> yeah you know quite a lot of our customers are in are in healthcare uh really just in the last two years and they've all got the same issue which is there's you know some of the things that you've just talked about but 
There's also um, this year, there's this, uh, they're calling it the great resignation. Um, yes. You know, a lot of people are, are choosing to do different things that they've be, maybe been doing. They were working as an accountant and they've decided, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do something else. Does that mean that there's an opportunity for you to perhaps attract, magnetize people who hadn't considered your industry before? Completely. And that's such a great point. Um, we're seeing that too, that others where they may be leaning out or stepping out of the industry, some are leaning in, you know, they've, yeah. you know, have been drawn to it, seeing the, you know, horrific things that have come, you know, from the pandemic and they want to make that difference. And we're yeah. in the process of, you know, building out, for an example, um, a CNA program that's Wesley Life owned, not something you have to go through a school for, but it will yep. be state approved. Um, so creating those training and development opportunities. We've always had, you know, substantial career development and training um, <clears throat> opportunities offered for our team members, but really amping that up, whether it's, you know, further uh, tuition and re reimbursement. We have a lot of different scholarship opportunities. And then again, yeah, on the job training that if someone, let's say they were um, a server and they, they want to get into the healthcare, healthcare um, industry, we would bring them on. We would do kind of like an aid and training program and really develop um, them and, and provide those competencies and, you know, ideally get them, get them to the point of um, completing their uh, nursing license. Wow, recruitment is so complex today. It's not just like post an advert, some people reply, choose the best one and job done. It's not Unfortunately like it, not. <laughs> no, it's not. The final thing I wanted to ask you about, which was is, is going slightly back to the beginning, but you said you started your career as a health coach. Um, and I'm interested to know if obviously the ability to talk the language of the industry would have helped you in recruitment, but I'm expecting that there would have been a few other transferable skills as well in terms of like the analytical behavior and uh, probably pretty good uh, at communicating with other humans and you know those types of things. What were the things that uh, what were the things from your job as a health coach that you were able to take into recruitment and make use of? Yeah, that's such an interesting connection. And I, I see it. Um, and it's I'm sure you're probably familiar with the term. It's a tactic called motivational interviewing. So it's really pulling out kind of the deeper understanding or the, you know, you have to ask the question why five times to really try to find that true meaning or reasoning why someone's doing something yes. um, without, you know, being too badgering or having some finesse while you're having those conversations, what it comes down to is it's all sales and marketing. I feel like, um, and, and being able to listen to listen and understand why, who, why these people have certain motives and then how do we act on those particular motivations? Um, so yeah, I think that motivational interviewing has really helped in my career personally, um, and recruiting and where I'm at today and building out those strategies and, being able to see different perspectives and understanding those and why people do what they do and, and, and dig into that a little bit deeper does help a lot in the recruiting chair as well. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's beyond that. I think it's a general life skill. If you, yeah. under, you, know, if you understand <laughs> yeah. why somebody is acting in a particular way or saying something or doing something, and it's, it, might, it might well not be the first thing that they say to you, just peeling that back a little bit and really getting to the uh, it is, is a life skill that can help you in so many different ways, I believe. So, um, Tyler, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I've really enjoyed that and um, all the very best. I hope we talk again. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for the invitation. This was great. Thank you.